So here's a question for you. Are you going to watch any of the Dragon Ball Z movies, like uh, Battle of Gods or Resurrection F? If... Because, you know, usually movies are about an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for all I know, it could have better pacing <laughs> than the show. Because I think Battle of the Gods is genuinely good, but Resurrection F is probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I hate it. Like, really? Resurrection F is everything I hate about Dragon Ball Z in one movie. So is it just, like, an hour and a half of people fighting a resurrected Frieza? It's more so, like, it starts off with them resurrecting Frieza. Strike one, okay? You're reminding me that death has no consequence in this world, so why should I even care? And then, like, you have all these people show up. You got, like, Gohan, and you got... Ten Shinhan, Yamcha, I think Yamcha's in it at one point. Krillin, Go, you know, they're all there. They're waiting for Goku, because of course they are. And they're just fighting oh, worthless moves. That is something moves. I really hate about the show, by the way. Every, and that, that's that's a formula, by the way. Wow. Like, when you get to oh, the so Android that, arc, that's the same That happens thing. over and over, because it's just like, during the Saiyan so arc, he gets Sonic. killed by Raditz. Or, he gets killed trying to defeat Raditz. Sonic. Yeah. Then they have to wait for him to come to help them with, the, with Nappa and Vegeta. And that takes like 10 episodes for him to cross Snake Way again. Then they get hmm. to the Namek arc and they have to wait like sure, six days for right. him to it get to Namek to help them out enough. against the Ginyu force. Then he gets almost destroyed get with the fight with Captain I Ginyu and has to go on the pod. Prototype. And then it takes him like 20 episodes to get out of the pod and fight Frieza. And it's then, like, Jesus. Do you want me to spoil the other stuff? Uh, sure, why not? Okay, because then after that. Goku gets a heart attack, and then he is, like, having heart failure. So then, now they have to wait for him to get better while Android 17 or 18 are running amok and blowing shit up. And then Cell comes along, right? And then Cell's this big, bad, ooh, no, he's the end of the world monster. So then Goku gets, you know, he gets back to normal. Cell turns into perfect Cell. And then Goku and Gohan go into a thing for 24 hours so they can train. Oh. And in the meantime, Cell's running amok and doing all this other shit. So it's the same thing again and again and again and again and again. Oh. Yeah. Because it's... Because on one hand, I do genuinely like aspects of the show. Like, I think... Um, I do too! Like, the part the, of the Namek arc where everybody's sort of like Vegeta, uh, the Earthlings, and Frieza Force are like, go looking for the Namek Dragon Balls. Thought that was genuinely really entertaining. Uh, there were some tense moments. It wasn't all just fighting. There was actually a lot of plot and world building going on. And then at some point, it just becomes nonstop fighting for like 40 episodes in a row. And it just mm. gets boring after a while. No, I agree just, with you, man. That's also why, again, I hate Battle or uh, Resurrection F because, again, they're waiting for Goku. So they're fighting a bunch of worthless monks that don't really add up to anything. And then Goku and Vegeta arrive, and then, like, Goku fights him first, like, one-on-one, -on -one, and then Vegeta fights him, like, one-on-one -on -one at one point. Vegeta's getting ready to land the final blow, and then Goku comes in and just cock-blocks him and takes the final blow, and then the movie ends. Ugh. I mean, there's a bit more to wow. it than just that, but it's just, like, it's the most worthless movie I've ever seen, and I hate it. It's just like, how many times can you bring back Frieza? Stop! I mean, he as like, long as the like comes wants. back, He like comes back more than 2003 Baxter Stockman. I don't even know what that is. He's, I don't even know what that is, and I agree with you! <laughs> <laughs> he is, uh, like, alongside the Shredder, is one of the most reoccurring villains in the TMNT uh, franchise. Okay. He is like a he's like an African American scientist who builds robots and becomes a cyborg, and in some like in, depending on, yeah, um, <laughs> and in some in some continuities he becomes a fly, like the eighty seven show and the twenty twelve show. I like the aesthetic show. of this place a lot. Just wanted to yeah. throw that out there because it's weird. It's like there's so many desert levels in SA two, and it's just like there's only I don't know. It's kind of and it's like, nobody else goes here. This is a Tales-exclusive minigame. 
Yeah. Like, I think you I think you were saying that this was supposed to be a Sonic level at some point. I it was in one of the credit pits where you see him snowboarding down this place. Yeah. Oh, and I think what we were talking about is we were watching Sonic's credits and there were these gates in the ice cap snowboarding section. There was like a picture yeah. of that in his credits. And I did find out that if you go to like the trial mode and go to mini games uh, under Sonic, you can actually play a version of ice cap with these, uh, with those gates in it. Okay. You get like an emblem for doing it? Uh, maybe. I'm sure Abif knows he's gotten all the <laughs> emblems. <laughs> My fucking tails he just randomly goes, oops. <laughs> By I the just, way, we barely we've barely talked about tails at all. Uh what like uh -oh. it's amazing how much of a tangent we've gone on for this play of you. That is true. I wonder where I am. So oh, if boy, you're playing oh, in the canonical order, this is your first time seeing this kind of Ancient civilization. Yeah, like you see a so. bit of it with Sonic. Like you see the Master Emerald Shrine, but you don't see like the actual pyramid. You don't see the Echidnas walking around. Yeah, that's fun. I just wish we could have seen more of it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's more like a backdrop for a, a, another story than it is like a focus. It's building um, up the events for the final chapter. Indeed. Uh, but you can see that there is a there's an upgrade. It's one of Tails' two upgrades, the jet you anklet, the which you can get badge. right away. To do and this is the rhythm badge. The action button down. And if you miss this, it's permanently gone, isn't it? No, I don't think you can miss it. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, I don't think you can. Pretty sure oh. T call won't appear until you get it. Oh, there's that at least. That's good. I might be wrong about the that. But the seven chaos yeah. I don't want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, now, is it weird that when I was a kid, I shipped these two? Um, uh, yeah, that is before? pretty weird. Huh. Because, like, the, like it seems like as if this is the first time that T call is actually having, like, Eye contact with somebody. I'm never to forget it. It goes like, like she's yeah, actually talking so. to a character. The servers are the same but in the Gamma chaos. playthrough, she looks like suggestively chaos at Gamma. Power. Power in which <laughs> Does she like want to fuck a robot? The is that what you mean by suggestively? The chaos. Well, she she just she's like sort of looking at him. Sure Weird. Means. Mm. You, well, we'll have pointed that out by by but this point, seven. but we're recording this ahead. But you haven't recorded a game yet. That, that a bridge series I like, came up with Gamma? was just T calls just like I'm gonna look at you suggestively, and then Gamma's like, "You do know I'm a robot, right?" Yeah, that's like that's like the first they time they call me T call like... because I'm ticklish. If you know what I mean. <laughs> oh my god, is that an actual thing from the abridged or what? No, that's just something I made up just now. Oh well, damn, got him. But no, it's Man, like those, it's, those tails of yours look mighty tickly. Like I don't remember Knuckles and Tikal having a conversation, or uh, Big and Tikal, or Amy and Tikal, Sonic and Tikal do, but at the final chapter. I'm but as like, horny as a horned toad frog. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, uh, not sex. I'm fishing for a good pun here. Oh, yeah. oh god damn it! <laughs> I got him hooked on these puns. <laughs> oh damn! This will get my tornado. I, you I don't could know, say that you baited me into it. Something seems really fishy about that. Oh. Well, you know, I think that one was kind of watered down. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, I'm just lining them up. Oh god damn, I was gonna use that! <laughs> that was the next one on my list! <laughs> I was gonna say I had them all lined up and everything, but no! No! Okay, so now we're gonna go make the, the Tornade 2. The time has I'll actually get to see how uh, 
Terusil makes it. I've ironed out most of the problems. How have you ironed out most of the problems? So, here it goes. You had no time to iron out the problems. Yeah, like, when did he do that? It's I didn't see any blueprints. I think he's full of shit. You know, I always tried to, like, I remember, um, like, I saw this room for the first time. I'm like, yo, this looks like the coolest thing ever. Even though it's just like a bunch of texture stretched out. But I always <laughs> yeah. tried... I always tried to fly in here as Tails, and I never could make it. Away we go! Huh. Cleared for takeoff, the classic straight to VHS children's me. I don't even know how he got that plane down there. Like, maybe there's a secret passage in his workshop that goes there. It's possible. I mean, it's, they are questioning the continuity of a Tails who can use his tails to fly. It's a, it's a fox, not a Tails. You know what I mean. This, this is how... <laughs> Uh, Tails finds Sonic on Red Mountain. He just flies around aimlessly. He's like, ah, oh, shit, there he is! Like, how did he know? That's, that's a good question, my friend. On um, this, this is just another episode of Video Game Sims. Bing! <laughs> uh... That's a cool pose, or a cool shot. Now what do you say we nail those guys? I don't know how Sonic is balancing himself on that plane there. You think that you'd think that Tails would put a little seed on it for him or something. Nah, fuck that. Sonic's too cool for that. But to be fair, it was kind of the same in the classic games too. Mm, yeah, but I don't know something because it was 2D there. It somehow it felt more felt like it made more sense. It was more believable. Yeah. You know, in um, in Sonic 4 Episode 2, uh, when you're on the plane and it speeds up, Sonic actually, like, jumps and grabs a hold of the edge of the plane. Uh -huh. it's, a little it's a little attention to detail that I liked. Interesting. I don't have to get that in Sonic Mania, though. The game's not authentic. Uh, well, you know... If I, if I wanted to play a ROM hack that threw a bunch of levels from previous games together, I'd go play it's Sonic 2 Delta. Oh, fuck! He's at Mania! I really, I really don't understand why I... that game... You know what I honest... You know what I honestly think it might be? It's more so just, I, I think a lot of people are kind of taking it as a TAKE THAT SONIC TEAM kind of thing. Well, you know, I can relate to that because that's exactly how I felt about AMTR. To Nintendo. Uh, yeah, compared to the Mercury Steam version, the mm. uh, 3DS game. Yeah. Because it's like amazing how much better AMTR is than Samus Returns. Hmm. Uh, I'll take your word for it. I haven't played Amtor yet. Amtor is is pretty damn great. I mean, I heard nothing but great things about it, so. Yeah, <laughs> but that but that that game for the Metroid fan base was that community victory mm. that Mania supposedly is. Uh, it was the game that people like me followed for like years upon years. Like, I would check the the Blogspot website, like, every other week for, like, probably, like, six to eight years. And just seeing it getting that much closer to completion, just constantly worrying about it getting taken down before it could release, and then the game finally came out. Um, it was, it was a community victory, because, like, if that was at that time, we didn't know about Samus Returns or Prime 4, as far as we knew. Uh, other M was the was death it. knell for the franchise. I would say Federation Force was more than Other M. Uh, no, it was more like say, Other M can, sold like shit. You could say Other M and it made wasn't Metroid, a spin-off, you know. Metroid Other M made the series into a vegetable, and then Federation Force almost almost pulled the plug. I think Federation Force is better than Other M. I mean, I'll take your word for it, but like, I'm talking about more so like reception. Like, I, I, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, Ryan. I thought Federation Force was pretty good. 
I mean, I hear yeah. from people who no. are, oh. you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. What, what am I doing wrong? You're just, supposed to, you're just supposed to stand in place and then just smash the A button. Oh. oh. So I, follow, I followed Ryan's <laughs> advice, just sat in place and mashed it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How did you fuck that up? <laughs> uh, so the lesson here is don't listen to Ryan. Never. <laughs> because you will you will die. Yeah, well I didn't know you'd have like one inch of health left. I don't even know how I lost that much health. Oh fuck. Oh, uh, you have to redo the entire thing. Yeah, and it goes on for like what feels like ten minutes. Like probably yeah. watch a third of Infinity War. I was about the time to make takes. a fucking Infinity War comic. <laughs> God dang it! Okay, let's see what you do this time! This time I play it my way, and I actually win. What are you doing? Yeah, you're- you fucking stand in front of it, and then you're then letting you dodge loose. it when it shoots! The difference and between what you told me to do and what I did is that I actually dodge- decided to dodge the laser instead of tanking it. I only had a silver of health left. You can't hold that against me! Whoa, that frame dropped though. Wow! <laughs> Ryan, if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shit, dog, that was good! <laughs> oh. Oh, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. We gotta land on the I applaud you, good sir. <laughs> Can I use that? Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like I made that up. That's, that's a, you know, kind of a cliched pickup line. Is it? Yeah. Oh. I've never heard of it before. I think I heard it on 8-Bit wow. Theater. This thing is really huge. I'm gonna start using- well, I'll probably get like a harassment claim or something, yeah, so probably, you probably not- Yeah, you probably don't want to say that to- in the workplace, if you know what oh. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I- I would do it when I would go to the club, bro. <laughs> we go it, it's clubbing- It's like at work, Ryan- Ryan goes up to Velma and says- It says if I said you had a beautiful- Oh, God. Excuse me, Mr. Velma. Who's- who- who is Velma? Well, you're Shaggy, so... God damn it! <laughs> I fucking hate you! <laughs> because uh, I think Velma- I think Velma and Shaggy go out at some point during one of the recent Scooby-Doo series. It's oh like, my. not the current one that looks like Rick and Morty, the one that came, like, right before it. Hey, Hang on one second, um... Now, how I'm sending you a video. I hate it when he doesn't listen to me. By the way, <laughs> you watch this. Sh I love that fucking live bag man. <laughs> you watch this shit whenever you get the chance. This is weird shit. Who are like it's not what you think, old pal. Velma and me were just doing a staring contest, right, Velma? Right. Huh? You see? Stop it, Shaggy. I'm not stupid. Are you cheating on me? Watch me. Bring it on, Eggman. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's the show I was talking about, yeah. That's where, like, Velma's super, like, sassy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you think she would be, because she's, like, the smartest one in a kind of a group of idiots. Like Aqua. Uh... So, like Aqua. Uh... Huh? Like Aqua. Well, you know, that's implying that Aqua isn't an idiot, though. <laughs> because obviously Terra and Ventus are. <laughs> like, they are both so stupid. Well, Aqua's the least of idiot. Come on, Tails. <laughs> Did you hear that? Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> I have not talked about Tails' gameplay at all. 
no, you haven't. Exo. So, so <laughs> what? So, so we're we're probably about uh, four episodes into the Tales playthrough, and now I'm finally gonna tell you how you play it. You're welcome. Enlighten us, Exo Senpai. Uh, so how it works is, uh, it's actually not too far removed from what he would be in the 2D games, really. He's basically Sonic, except he can fly. And because the game's in 3D, uh, being able to fly is a lot more, uh, let's say, boundary-breaking. It's, uh, because, you see how fast I beat that? two Com seconds! There you go! Like, you compare that to the Sonic version of this level, where you have to, like, go around on those, uh, catwalks to get... And he only has to play half the stage, he doesn't have to do the back half. Uh, but it's just like, uh, all the levels are, like, you have to race somebody to the end first, but it's, like, Tails can fly? And... I guess Eggman can in Speed Highway, but... It's, most of the time you're yeah. racing Sonic, who can't fly. Sonic, uh, so you're gonna be at the, the stages pretty damn quickly. And then Sonic yeah. just disappears. It's like, I don't know how Sonic is the fastest thing alive here. Because Tails is about as fast as him, and he can fly! It's pretty fly, bro. It is indeed. Ugh. Well, I just want to fly. He's all coming! around the world. Statues That's... crumble for me. They know how much I love you. Where is this from? Uh, fly by Sugar Ray. Oh. I was thinking more like, yeah, you're pretty fly for a white guy. 